and I'm pleased to be joined today by Jerome Kennedy, Minister of Natural Resources, and Tom Marshall, Minister of Finance, to provide an update on the dispute with ExxonMobil with respect to in-province fabrication of the third module. The development of our natural resources, whether it is our non-renewable oil or gas, our clean sources of hydroelectricity and wind, or our vast mineral wealth, has played a crucial role in strengthening our provincial economy. The petroleum industry continues to grow and thrive here in Newfoundland and Labrador, and is certainly one of the primary reasons for the exciting period of prosperity and success we are witnessing. This industry drives our economy, fuels employment for many women and men throughout the province, and has helped transform our position as a have-not province to a have province. The days of us watching others benefit from our resources are long gone. Our government has a long-term vision for Newfoundland and Labrador, and that is to ensure that we are full partners at the table when it comes to resource development. Our number one priority has always been to ensure the people of Newfoundland receive and Labrador receive maximum benefits from the Hebron project. It is important that commitments made when we first negotiated the Hebron Benefits Agreement are honored and we are treated fairly and with respect. I am pleased to be here this afternoon to announce that we have reached a settlement with ExxonMobil and its partners with respect to a dispute about in-province fabrication of the third module, <coughs> the drilling equipment set. The benefits agreement worked. Newfoundland and Labrador is wide open for business and we welcome investment into our province. Make no doubt about it, we are interested in making business deals that will help grow our economy and benefit our people. But we are not interested in making business deals on the backs of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. As a partner in this project, we stood our ground during this dispute over in-province fabrication, stayed firm to the commitment we made when we first negotiated this deal. Hebron must move forward on terms that not only work for the partners, but work for us. We have been firm and clear on our position. Since day one, we have stood our ground and strongly advocated the importance of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians being the main benefactors with respect to in-province fabrication. Our perseverance has resulted in the security of $150 million, which will be strategically invested for the benefit of all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. The payment will be made to the province on June 30th, 2016, as agreed to by the pro project proponents and which was identified as the most probable future date at which time any replacement work awarded through arbitra arbitration would have reasonably commenced. Like module fabrication costs, the payment will be treated as a capital cost to the project for the purposes of royalty calculation. This is good news and is a direct result of having the Hebron Benefits Agreement in place. The settlement compares favorably with the value of fabricating the DES in Newfoundland and Labrador, and we will see additional revenue coming to the provincial government, which can be strategically invested for the benefit of our people for many years beyond construction. I am pleased to announce we will allocate the funds to invest in the construction of a new science centre at Memorial University, health care initiatives in the area of cancer care and long-term care in Labrador, geoscience to increase the level of exploration in our offshore, and an infrastructure investment to retrofit the former Stephenville Mill paper shed. The new science centre will address the need for high-end uh, laboratories and additional space for growth at both the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science. Modern facilities at Memorial will enable the university to recruit and retain faculty, students and staff, while increasing Memorial's success and participation in national and international grant competitions. We will also establish two new operating rooms at the Bliss Murphy Cancer Clinic in St. John's, which complements the province's cancer control, control strategy. Funds will support extensions at the existing long-term care facility in Happy Valley Goose Bay, 
and this will help provide additional long-term care beds for seniors. Funding will be allocated to encourage geoscience initiatives in the provinces offshore and deliver comprehensive data to companies interested in exploring our province's basins. This data minimizes the level, level of risk and costs associated with exploration in Newfoundland and Labrador. Funds will also be provided for retrofit work to the paper shed at the former Stephenville Mill site, which would support future industrial fabrication and potential offshore projects. Two of the three modules related to Hebron will still be built in Newfoundland and Labrador. These include the drilling support module, which has been identified for fabrication in Marystown, and the accommodations module, which will be fabricated at Bull Arm. The third module, which was under dispute, was the drilling equipment set, which will now be fabricated out of province. The Hebron project is expected to generate significant employment and expenditure benefits for residents and businesses. To date, there have been significant local contract awards totaling over $300 million. Peak employment is estimated at 3,500 persons. In closing, today's settlement is a reflection of our commitment to the people of Newfoundland and Labrador and our unwavering determination to maximize benefits in the best interests of the province. As construction prepares to get underway at the Bull Arm site, we remain committed to ensuring economic and employment benefits for this project are felt by the people <coughs> of Newfoundland and Labrador. I will now turn it over to my colleague, the Minister of Natural Resources, to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, Premier. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As uh, outlined by the Premier, a, a central tenet of our provincial energy plan is that our province's natural resources must be developed in a manner that ensures sustainable economic growth for Newfoundland and Labrador and long-term prosperity and, and success for our people and businesses. One of our government's goals is to ensure that our province is the primary beneficiary of our natural resources and that our people reap the maximum benefits from development. The principles secured in the Hebron Benefits Agreement ensure that the people of Newfoundland and Labrador receive the maximum benefit from the Hebron project. Today I'm pleased to join Premier Dunderdale and Minister Marshall to announce what we consider to be a fair compensation agreement that we have reached with the project partners for the Hebron development. Today also I would like to thank uh, uh, Premier Dunderdale uh, in her role as then Minister of Natural Resources for showing the strong leadership to develop and negotiate the Hebron Benefits Agreement. By having a structured agreement in place, it allowed us to work our way through this process without unilateral decisions being made. There was a disagreement, there, there was a dispute, but as the Premier has often stated, there can be respectful ways of dealing with disputes and still maintaining relationships that benefit us all. The Hebron Benefits Agreement worked in our, in our favor by providing the ability to challenge work moving out of the province and it provided a remedy to address the issue. One of the most significant points that comes out of all of this is that without a benefits agreement, without a structure in place, there would not have been any recourse on this matter and future relationships would have been adversely and severely affected. We all have one common goal here, is to see the production of first oil in 2017 for the benefits that it brings our province and also the benefits that it, uh, it brings to the, the companies involved. We felt strongly, and again on a, on a personal basis, I felt very strongly, that we had the capacity within our province to build all three Hebron modules, and we still maintain that position that we had a strong case to support having the DES fabricated in the province. However, the principle of compensation is important, and as opposed to engaging in a dispute that could go on for a lengthy period of time without guaranteed results, we felt that this was a fair way to resolve the matter. I would also like to I personally acknowledge uh, the support of, of Bob Cadigan and Noya for their continued support throughout this process. Noya has been a strong advocate 
for our companies doing work in the offshore. And they have been a strong advocate that we had the capacity to, to build this module in the province. So it's important that the principle of not allowing a company to make a unilateral decision has been confirmed in this process. I'd also like to thank the, uh, the officials in, in my department who, uh, who have done such great work over the last number of months uh, in persevering in this difficult task. Oftentimes, or there are times that the, we forget that the people who, who do the work on, on this bring such dedication to, to the process and such strong belief, and I think it's important that we, we recognize their efforts. Our province has a highly skilled service and supply sector made up of over 500 companies and a world-renowned reputation for delivering first-class projects. In my opinion, we have the people and the companies needed to do all of the work in our province, and as best as we can secure, it will be done here. This position, however, doesn't mean that we could force ExxonMobil to complete the third work on the third module in the province. The Hebron Benefits Agreement outlined that if the proponent or the operator concluded there was a significant adverse economic impact, then they could make the decision to move the, uh, the module outside, and they did. We then went through the uh, mediation process, and uh, without success in that a result wasn't reached uh, during mediation, but we are here today to announce a, what I would su suggest is a very successful conclusion. Having to go through the arbitration, having spent uh, 20 years in a, uh, in a courtroom process, there's never any guarantee of success. What we have done here today is achieve what we consider to be a very fair result and one that allows us to get on with business. So it was on this basis that considering the compensation offer uh, that uh, we decided to reach an agreement uh, with ExxonMobil and the proponents as outlined by the Premier. I would suggest that the uh, compensation represents a good, responsible decision made with the best interests of the province at the forefront. forefront. And as the Premier stated, $150 million provides a financial package which we can strategically invest to benefit the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. So we get ready for the, uh, to st the start of Hebron, that the proponents will uh, continue to prepare bull arm for the start of the construction of the GBS. And the compensation offer announced today will not affect the project schedule or impact first oil in 2017, which was the basis upon which ExxonMobil moved the third module outside. So we stand by our commitment uh, to the, maximize the benefits for our people. And as the Premier has indicated, as a government and as a partner in the Hebron project, we are determined to ensure that the Hebron development moves forward in the best interests of Newfoundland and Labrador and obtains economic and employment opportunities for the benefit of our people. I thank you very much for being here. I now uh, pass it over to my esteemed colleague, the, uh, our esteemed colleague, the Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy, uh, Premier Dunderdale, ladies and gentlemen. Well, despite the announcement the uh, day before yesterday by the International Monetary Fund of a slowdown in the world economy, our economy here in Newfoundland and Labrador it continues to thrive and thrive. Consumer confidence and business confidence is extremely high. And with announcements made here today by you, Premier Minister Kennedy, that confidence is going to continue for some time in the future. The Government of Newfoundland and Labrador has taken a very responsible approach in reaching this agreement on compensation with ExxonMobil and its partners. Arbitration would have taken a significant amount of time and would have involved uh, significant financial resources. And even though we all feel that our case was a strong one, a solid one, there is no guarantee that we would have uh, prevailed. And as Minister Kennedy said, that, it ended, that the outcomes of any litigation or arbitration are always uncertain. I am confident that this agreement is good and that's fair to Newfoundland, for Newfoundland and Labrador and it will provide us with the means to do even more great things in this province. Any time we receive additional funds, we must carefully review our options as to where the money can best be used. I'm pleased that the $150 million in compensation that has been agreed upon and will be received in June of 2016 will be directed towards sound investments 
that will benefit many of our residents and Newfoundland Labrador families. As a government, we have to be strategic. and We have to make decisions on how best to invest in progressive programs and services, as well as in infrastructure. And prioritizing projects is always challenging. But the projects that the Premier and the Minister have identified today will have significant positive impacts on education and on health care. And these new investments will provide economic benefits and jobs for the people of the province that compare favorably to the benefits that would have been generated from the construction of uh, the DES module here. For example, we expect the construction of the new Science Centre alone will create 1,440 direct and indirect person years of employment and approximately $94 million in labour income. Now, also important is that the investment in the geosciences will help encourage further oil exploration, which can potentially lead to more discoveries and thus new sources of revenues so that we can use that to help Newfoundland families and, and the people of this province. Once it's online, Hebron project will have a great impact on the economy of our province. With more than 700 million barrels of recoverable oil, we currently expect the total value of the project to be worth in excess of $20 billion. Our economy is the strongest it's ever been. We have more people working here than any other point in our history, and they're earning more than they ever have before. Average weekly earnings in Newfoundland and Labrador for the first time in our history are higher than the Canadian average. This province accounts for almost half of the capital investment projects identified in Atlantic Canada this year. We are generators of economic growth in Canada. Our aim is to build upon this position of economic strength, and Hebron is certainly going to help us with that goal. Thank you. Thank you. Ministers?